People always say, oh, it's whenever you're ready. People don't really know when they am ready sort of thing. I think you should have sex when you're married. I think you've got to be in a stable relationship. When you love the person. 14, 15 is the age that people are having sex. I think the right age is when people feel ready. Not just when you are told you're ready by your partner. I think it depends on the person. I think some people are much more mature than other people. When should you have sex? When I'm legal. Not when you're being pressurised and into. Not just like a one night stand. Or when you're assuming that you're ready because everyone else is doing it, but because you know that um, <clears throat> when you go ahead with it, you won't regret it. 16 is the law, so uh, uh, don't have it under that, but have it when you're ready, definitely, as long as it's not under 16. Over S. STDs, like AIDS from having sex, like... It's a really bad thing. You might have a baby. If you don't want to get pregnant, you can get pregnant. And then you get on to the controversial thing of abortion and whether that's right or wrong. Clever people know that if you have a baby, it, it can ruin your life and things like that, so... You know, they wouldn't want... You know, but sometimes something. it can be happy. It doesn't always ruin your life. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't always ruin your life. It doesn't life, always ruin your life. Most STIs you can get rid of, I think. Well, they're horrible. I wouldn't want to get one personally. So if a lady has sex with two men, like one night and then one night, then that baby won't know who its father is. The media. If you have sex underage, you can go to, I think you can go to jail or something like that. Or someone can like not think just at the moment of the time, they can like not think and then have unprotected sex and then they have to basically deal with the consequences because it's them who made that choice, not anyone else. So it's them who have to deal with the consequences, really. If you are going to have it at a young age, you definitely need to use protection. You should always like use a condom, to be honest. Definitely. Marriage. I think marriage is good. I think marriage is important. I think it's a good idea. Marriage is a big deal. I think it costs a lot. I think it's someone's own choice. I'd like to be married before I had have children. Personally, I don't want to get married when I'm older. I think marriage is sometimes taken, like, so lightly, sometimes. I think uh, people are rushing it. Sometimes it can be pointless. So if they have an early pregnancy, something like that, and it can be, oh, we've got to get married now, sort of thing. I believe it's something that should be taken seriously. If you like another person, they should get married. It shows commitment. Everybody has to have it. You commit to being with it him or her for the rest of your life. Yeah, I think so marriage is a good idea because like, if there's a problem, they always sort of like find a way around it. If like you are married, I think it works because you, you can rely on somebody there. If you're married, you have like a commitment and you feel like more secure, if you get me. If you are in a relationship with someone and you really love them and they really love you and they want to go through with it, then why not? When I think of marriage, I think of one in five parents got divorced. My mum got divorced with my dad. Very stressful, the divorce. I know loads of people whose parents are split up. It's just so bad for the child having to go to one house, to another, to another, like constantly every week, and it's just sort of like things like, what's the point in this? I think marriage is a good idea because my mum and dad have been together for like ever since they were 13. My parents divorced. It's quite hard to get over. When someone close to you gets divorced, you feel very down. I think it has to have like a good reason. Find that the marriage isn't working out or you've grown apart from your partner and sometimes the best thing to do is divorce. I think it's really sad, to be honest. Sometimes relationships do break down, same as friendships break down. and You can try to make it work and then it, you just can't, so you get divorced. It's far better to be apart and not arguing than to be together and arguing every night. I think that like people put off divorce for the kids' sake. If it's, say, your mum or your dad, you, you don't know who to speak to. Whenever people think of divorce, they always think it's a severe thing. Um, my parents found out they're gonna, you know, they, they got divorced. My dad still comes out, you know, they're still like a brother and sister to each other. It's just they don't love each other, you know. I think divorce is like too easy for people to do. I personally don't believe in divorce. I think that once you're married, that you should stay together for the rest of your life. Say if you get a divorce, it's like, what's the point in getting married then? You've made all these vows and promises uh, that you're going to stay together and then you get divorced. So Maybe people, out of love, they marry, but then they find out who that person is. And, like, they don't really like that person. That's why they might 
the, the um, divorce. All I know that he left me when I was nine months. Parents don't love each other. You know, it has an effect on you as a child, but it's not. It didn't stop me from moving up. You know, moving on in life and everything. You know, it's a fact in life. I'm not bothered. All I know is that I have to look after my mum now, because I'm like, I'm the only person, man, that's in her life now. So, look after her. What could I actually get? Well, do you want to make a, make a list? Weed. Weed. Maybe crystal meth. Ketamine you can get here. Cocaine and heroin. LSD. I wouldn't say there's much that you couldn't get. I know that weed's like really common. That's quite easy to get hold of, I'd say, for teenagers my age. Some of my friends' parents who sort of do weed occasionally and something like that, like just really, I don't know why, but they sort of treat weed as tobacco and they just smoke it casually. Yeah. Are there access to weed? I know people who smoke weed. And I think a boy in our school was caught dealing weed and stuff. I'd say that it's easier to get yeah. hold of uh, drugs than it is to get hold of like, alcohol or something like that. Oh, definitely. And it's not, there's not really like much of a clamp down on it by the police and stuff. You buy like drugs on the street and that, and you, the only way you can get alcohol is to get it from shops. My best friend, his little sister, she's about eight or nine. She found cocaine at the bus stop. I can get hold of uh, cannabis and I think ketamine. I don't even know if it's against the law, but I don't think, I don't think it's like a, a hard, like, drug. Some of my friends, uh, they, they go out and take it uh, on like a Friday night or something. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs>Peer pressure. They take it to be confident. They'd be like, yeah, everyone's doing it, everyone's doing it, we can do it. Gives them like status, or so and so's done weed the other day, he's pretty cool or something like that. Want to fit into the crowd. When you know that it's not allowed, it's like you have to have it. By just going, that is bad, it's probably like giving them like more motivation to actually try it. They want to try it because they think it's cool. Or sometimes they just feel so depressed, they just take it and they want to like escape the world. You don't want to be the loner that walks the corridors. People who are stressed. Anyone can start taking drugs. It's not like the people that hang out loads or the people that aren't cool. Like anyone takes drugs. It isn't easy to say no, but it is a good advice to say no. They change their personality. They do change quite a lot. They don't really care as much. You find it hard to sort of sustain a proper conversation. Become secluded from everybody else and you don't really hear from them a lot. They're always stressed out. Before they'd be like quite like happy and uh, like have a bit of a laugh when they'll start taking like everything seriously. I think a lot of people that are doing it or have done it, they're a bit touchy, a bit like... Mina. <laughs> that sounds stupid, but... They get harsher, sort of thing. Their actual look, they do look quite a lot different. They don't really care about anybody else, but apart from themselves and the drug they need. It's just bad. The moods are different. I know one person who's, who was quite um, addicted to, like, weed. Won't go to work and instead just sits there smoking weed all day, basically. See, like, this change in him, he got very thin and he was sort of hyper all the time. Before we ever started like smoking it, it was it was fine, it was lovely to be around, things like that. But now it's like you see him and it's like, oh I've seen like people just start taking weed and stuff and then end up doing it like every day. Even if they did like kind of stop taking the drugs, you can't really get like the person back that they was if you know it like completely changes you like kind of forever. Whatever people say you do get messed up from doing it. Mm. Depression. Uh, you're always like feeling down. Change in their personality. They don't say a lot to anybody, they just rather be on their own. It seems like a quite big thing in teenagers. You feel like sad, like really over anything. That would be obviously the first signs and then they just would get more and more down and down and down. You just really don't feel like doing anything really. Depression is sort of, you don't want to see anyone, you, you're constantly sad all the time. That's what I think it is anyway. It's a hard thing to get over really. I think everyone can be depressed no matter if they're male or female. Some teenagers do get 
depressed, like for different reasons. In a relationship and it's just finished and they might be depressed. Family issues. They kind of like won't talk to anyone about like their problems. You sort of feel like you have to hide it. If I have a lot of stress in schoolwork, bullying or even exams, cover my friends are really depressed and stuff. And although it affects you greatly. It also affects people around you. Yeah, because I'm always constantly worrying about them, like, oh, are they all right? Oh, what they're thinking about today? I'd say it was very difficult for me because they sort of like grew quite attached to me. And then I felt that I couldn't be in that situation because they were so down about everything that it was making me feel upset all the time. There's obviously that extreme you know when you're that real depression and when you're really depressed where you know you there is nothing else that you can think about apart from all these negative thoughts i've said like if you share it sometimes it's help it helps you to get it out self-harm is where you like say cut yourself or when you harm yourself to inflict injuries upon yourself they like find anything sharp and they'll just slit their wrists to quite an extent. Simple things from just like when people punch walls. And the main place you see is, wrist. is the wrist just like down there sort of thing. Hurt themselves in every way possible really. They were just cutting their wrists. And they'll wear like armbands over it. Every now and again they try and hide like these grazes. For me it's hard to understand. Self-harm isn't something people would show off. We're just I'm really sad because the fact that they know they're doing it to themselves, they know they're harming themselves, but they don't want anyone else to know. If you want to have an idea of why they do it, you've got to be in their shoes. Something's happened and you don't like, like it, so then you do stuff to yourself. Because it might give them a sense of relief. It's stuff like things going on at home, um, maybe problems when it comes to girlfriends and... You cause harm to yourself because you to relieve the pain. It definitely happens amongst young boys as well. If you're going to self-harm yourself, you've got to be as so, so unhappy. It's unbearable. It must be. She just hurt herself on her legs with the needle, uh, or a, ne and a needle instead of doing it on her arms because she didn't want anyone else to know. Just from the way they dress, it might not mean that they self-harm. They say that, like, emos self-harm themselves and they hate their life and they slit their wrists and stuff, but it's not just them. Anybody could self-harm themselves, you know. I know people that do self-harm and they try and hide it from their parents and things. And it's, it's not an easy thing to tell from a person. It's sort of a hard situation to deal with. It's a subject that makes quite a lot of people uncomfortable because they don't know whether to approach them or to leave them alone or... I'd ask them what was wrong first and what, you know, what brought you to do this. You can ask them what the problem is. But when you see it, you sort of like, you have to handle the situation quite delicately, I suppose. It might be something really sensitive, like things happening at home and stuff. You've still got to like, help them. Like, even if I don't like, want help from someone, you've got to like, try to help them on your own. Speak about it and just tell her to let it all out to me and offer what I could to help her, offer whatever I could. I think what they really needed was just someone to talk to and like, open up about it, which is what I think most teenagers need.